Hello and welcome to my unboxing and first look at the brand new Primaris Codex. Okay, all right, it's the brand new Space Marine Codex from Games Workshop. This will cost you the same as the other codexes, which is brilliant. £25, uh, they could have charged £30. Um, the previous Space Marine Codex, which is here, uh, did cost £30. If you'd like to support the channel, I uh, appreciate you subscribing, liking the video as always, um, but also have a Patreon, and if you buy your Warhammer products uh, from Element Games using the affiliate link in the description, uh, then that helps the channel out too. There are other YouTubers that get sent these codexes and other products for free and early. That's why you see um, their videos up earlier than mine. I buy this with my own money in exactly the same way as everybody else. So any support really helps the channel. Let's unbox this. I wasn't a big fan of getting a new codex, a new Space Marine codex, especially not a second codex within the same edition. I'm fundamentally against that. Yes, it's been a couple of years since this codex came out, but it's only been two years. So this codex right here, this 30 pound codex, pointless. Yeah, that you could argue that there's some lore and stuff in there and some nice pictures, but this isn't a very good pr uh, precedence, um, in my opinion, for things to come. Uh, if Games Workshop are gonna aggressively release new codexes every two years, it's too much in one edition. Um, and this current codex, from what I've read, people have said that it has made Space Marines one of the top tier factions, which has annoyed quite a few people, but other people think that it's uh, justified. However, me, personally, for the gaming side of things, I'd much rather be all the other armies just be brought up to a similar level uh, and the whole game be more balanced, which of course is a nightmarishly impossible task to achieve for all the game designers out there. Um, but it's something that I hope that they do uh, aspire to rather than the ching 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 um, of shareholders which I've got a sneaky suspicion um, is behind uh, a lot of the, the recent um, decisions. Anyway, let's unbox this. I found a small um, blade in my collection. So, there we go. Got a load of green popcorn. And here it is. I'll zoom the camera in a bit, bit closer uh, to the Codex. But there we go. Codex Space Marines. So not um, Codex Adeptus Astartes Space Marines, it's just Codex Space Marines. Um, already I can tell that the previous one is uh, larger. Um, let's just take this cellophane off like a snooker player. And uh, there we go. So what does the sort of back cover sort of look like? Uh, well, the back cover looks like there's not a single Space Marine. You know, like an old space marine. Well, there's terminators there, and there's a land raider, and a, a predator, and the new transport. Um, but let's have a look. Uh, so, my first look, we've got 192 pages. Um, the previous codex had uh, 208, um, just just there. So that's 16 more pages um, you're getting uh, in the in the older um, codex, uh, which isn't that much of a drop, to be fair. Just get the camera angle in a, in a better position for you guys. Um, okay, so you've got this artwork from the uh, Shadow Spear box set. Uh, it says here, you know, Space Marines, the Adeptus Astartes uh, introduction. Welcome, formidable warrior of the Adeptus Astartes even though it says Space Marines throughout the whole thing. Um, 
I wonder whether it'll actually say Codex Primaris. I did wonder at one point whether they'd just stick to a Space Marine Codex and then have a Primaris as a supplement. Um, I think there's enough there now for Primaris to get their own Codex. Um, but, you know, and then have your previous Space Marine Codex just focus on, you know, Space Marines. But there we go. There's the uh, artwork again. So you've got the Emperor's Finest. Ancient Origins. So this is my first look at this. I, I haven't watched any videos um, to get an understanding uh, or a so kind of like a preview. Got the making of a Space Marine. Got Tools of War. Here you've got bolt guns, bolt rifles, uh, plasma incinerators, um, even the assault bolter. So you're getting some of the primaris weapons uh, put into the, the lore side of things now. In memoriam, chapter organization, Got all the different companies, companies of the chapter, beyond the ultima founding, you've got the awoken, the indoctrinated and the ascended. Um, so the Ultima founding was the largest mobilization of newly created Adeptus Astartes in centuries. It saw thousands of Primaris space marines woken from the stasis beneath the surface of Mars and hurled into the forefront of mankind's galactic war. Yet this was not the only route by which the Primax, uh, which by which the Primaris Battle Brothers joined the fight for the Emperor's realm. Um, so the Awoken one for Mars, the Indoctrinated uh, were the first wave, and then the Ascended. Um, could a space marine who had not been created Primaris undergo the necessary gene therapies? Um, in short, could he cross the Rubicon Primaris to become a yet greater living weapon? Some say Marnius Kalgar, or was it Kosora Khan? More Battle Brothers cross the Rubicon with every passing day. Ultramarines, the sons of Gilliman. I pronounce it that way, you can pronounce it however you like. It's a made-up fantasy universe. Um, Duncan in Games Workshop pronounces it Gulliman, um, so it's up to you. Uh, Heldrian markings. Successor chapters. Finally, they've put my chapter in the Space Marine Codex, finally, oh. oh, finally, excellent, with the gold armour as well, they never used to have gold armour, Games Workshop, thank you, they used to have yellow trim and yellow breastplates, but that is my chapter right there. I don't put the, um, the eagle thing on, but the successor chapter is from the uh, Ultramarines. Um, there you go. Imperial Fists. Ah, right, okay. This is interesting. More success successor chapters of the Imperial Fists. White Scars. So just remember that um, the supplements came out today as well, the uh, Ultramarine supplement and the White Scar supplement, they're both £17.50 each, uh, which isn't too bad, but it's it's almost a kind of codex um, pricing, isn't it? It'd be better if they were £15, a nice round £15 for your, your you know, Ultramarine codex would be brilliant. Anyway, so you've got successive chapters for White Scars, I believe they are, yep. Raven Guard. Held rear markings. Then they have successor chapters, of course. The raptors look like they've got the same symbol as the black consoles. Uh, salamanders. Markings. No successor chapters for the salamanders. It's just them, it seems. Iron hands. There are a couple of um, successor chapters. The Iron Lords and the Red Talons, the Brazen Claws and the Sons of Medusa. Unknown foundings, um, you've got the Black Dragons, uh, Mentors, Fire Lords, Exorcists, Blood Ravens, Star Dragons, Storm Giants, White Templars. A nice little uh, Wake the Dead 
uh, artwork. Um, both of those, um, those two, both of those HQs are now available separately in their sets. Then, then it talks about, yeah, so then it goes through the unit breakdown. So you've got commanders, which include captains and lieutenants, command squads, so you've got company veterans and company ancients and company champions, librarians, chaplains, apothecaries, tech marines, servitors and thunderfire cannons. We are going to get a Primaris um, tech marine. Uh, there's been a preview of one, a uh, Primaris one actually. Um, so hopefully they redo the Thunderfire Cannon 2 in plastic, that would be brilliant. Um, battle line squads, you've got intercessor squads, tactical squads, infiltrator squads. So they're kind of like, the infiltrator squads are definitely, um, you know, a forefront with those other two. So there's three main ones now. Uh, close support squads, you've got reaver squads, incursor squads, and scepter squads. Um, again, incursor are the new um, close support squad. Um, there for elites, um, and we'll, we'll look at them in a moment. Close support squads, assault squads, centurion assault squads, biker squads, attack bikes, and land speeders. This is all your fast attack. Fire support squads, you've got hell blaster squads, eliminator squads. We'll look at them later on, but they were uh, in the Shadow Spear box set. Aggressor squads. Okay. Fire support squads continued, yes, yeah, so suppressor squads, devastator squads, centurion devastator squads, uh, veteran squads, so you've got vanguard veterans, sterngar veterans, terminator squads, and terminator assault squads. And then combat walkers, you've got dreadnoughts, redemptor dreadnoughts, venerable dreadnoughts, ironclad, contemptor, invicta tactical war suits, so you've got war suits within the combat walkers. Um, uh, section and uh, that and the Invicta Tactical War Suits, they're out today to pre-order. Scout squads um, and bite squads and land speed of storms. You've got transport vehicles which is rhinos, razorbacks, drop pods. But they don't have the new one there so that'll probably be later on. Battle tanks, you've got predators, whirlwinds, vindicators, hunters, stalkers. Gravitic battle tanks. Ah, so this is where they these come in. Um, so you've got the repulsors, repulsor executioners, and impulsors. So you've got the transports for the um, Primaris. Then you've got land raiders and crusaders and redeemers, gunships, storm raven gunships, storm talon, storm hawk interceptors, and that's it. So so far we haven't got to any data sheets yet, and we're what almost 100 pages in. I think we will be 100 pages in. Anyway. Insignium Astartes, so you've got a captain, you've got a, a nice picture there of uh, some of the new models and some of the Chaos Space Marines. Got the uh, Chaplain, Apothecary and Librarian. You've got a couple of new models there, so you've got the Lieutenant in Phobos Armour. You've got uh, some Infiltrators and Incursors as well. That's a pr pretty cool looking Incursor. And that one, that's a new new model there. So it's great that we're uh, now getting a codex. This is um, hails back to a lot. This hails back to earlier in in the hobby when I first started, when um, they'd release the codex first, which is a great idea, by the way. Um, and they would have some of the new units in that codex for you to look at and to read the rules and things. And then they'd bring out the units uh, afterwards. I must say they've done it quite early. Um, I mean, in terms of like the Incursor um, Warsu up for pre-order today, um, I would have liked an extra week for you to sort of get get to grips with the codex. However, with the community website, they do post some teasers and they do post some previews of the rules, um, so that sort of whets your appetite. But there's nothing quite similar to looking at a data sheet and then making your own decision on whether to get that unit or not. So here are the new units, the, the Incursors there. Um, and then you've got the Eliminators as well. So you've got some of the new uh, models right here. Um, not sure if you can see them uh, well enough, but um, there you go. So you've got the Impulsor there, uh, this Gravitic Transport, and you've got some Eliminators here um, with bolt rifles, but then you've got one of these Las Fusils, one of these new weapons. That's really cool. The Sergeant looks pretty good as well with the instigated bolt carbine. And then look at this dude. 
This Imperial Fists uh, Eliminator. Pretty awesome, right? Yeah, and then just to balance that awesomeness, perfect balance as all things are apparently, and um, you've got here the Invicta Tactical Warsuit, which looks absolutely terrible. I'm, I'm embarrassed to be part of a hobby that has this abomination. This isn't 40K for me, this isn't Grimdark, this isn't anything, this is just, yeah, center of mass, fully exposed, I know they're wearing power armor, I get that. And I know land speeders, they, they didn't have, uh, I say, any kind of protection in, in a way, but land speeders are really fast. This is a walker. Um, I just, no matter how much I try to like it, I just can't like it, guys. And I'm a Space Moon player through and through. You've seen how massive my army is. I just can't get to grips with this walker at all. If it didn't have that at all, and it was just a walker, um, Maybe if that was fully enclosed, I could probably get on board with it if they remove this silly heavy bolter um, clip on. It's just trying to be Titanfall so hard. Like, Titanfall's Titanfall, you know. It, again, it's almost like it's Mech Warrior as well. It's just, I just can't deal with that in my life. I, I'm sorry, I just can't. Anyway, moving on. Uh, you've got some intercessors. Uh, you've got some more. You've got... Um, some more Primaris there, and then you've got some small Space Marines, you know, the tactical Space Marines. Uh, you've got, you know, the Assault Marines and Vanguard Veterans and Inceptors. Um, you've got some more there, and then you've got the Redemptor Dreadnought, which is actually pretty cool. It does look cool compared to the uh, Walker thing. Um, you've got some old uh, models there. You've got some more Primaris, really nice uh, Lieutenant miniature released to celebrate the 500th uh, store and then the captain in gravis armor and then you've got the impulsor with iron hell uh, heavy stubber you've got the repulsor there as well did i say impulsor i think i said impulsor and then you've got an executioner there and then you've got some mixture of uh, primaris with reavers with uh, devastators and centurions and a stormhawk interceptor and then lo and behold, you've got uh, a sample army, which contains mainly primary space marines. Where, am, am I missing something? Where is the sample army that just has space marines, not primaris? This is crazy. This, I was on the fence about them replacing the whole of the Space Marine range, um, but now the evidence is just so in your face. Um, they can't make it obvious enough. There's hardly any pages here of just standard Space Marines. It's of the new models, it's mainly Primaris focused. Look, you've got these big, big pages full of Primaris and new models. You've got hardly any of the old models like they used to. Um, you've you've got, I mean, where's a where's a Land Raider? You know, um, in these sort of model profiles, there isn't a Land Raider, uh, as far as I can see. It's it's absolutely crazy. Um, I mean, undoubtedly, a Land Raider is you know both cheaper and better sort of tactically. I think than. Um, the, the new tanks, that's what I've read anyway. Uh, but yet, no, they haven't got them. Um, it's mainly Primaris focused. Should this codex be called Codex Primaris? I, that's what I'm thinking. Anyway, so they give you this example of all the new uh, models. Um, coincidentally, uh, then they go through Defenders of Mankind. So here is where you get all their abilities. So you get Angels of Death. This unit has the following abilities, and they shall know no fear, Bolter Discipline, Shock Assault, and Combat Doctrines. So Angels of Death, that one Angels of Death has all of these. They shall know no fear, fear. make a morale test. Uh, you can reroll the dice. They, they just used to have that. Then they brought this Bolter Discipline in, I think, last year. Um, essentially... The firing model's target is within the half the weapon's range maximum. That means that they can uh, make double the number of attacks. Firing model is infantry and every model is armed, 
is remain stationary, so it gets fired twice. And then the fire model is terminated by Centurion or Dreadnought. So Dreadnought can fire twice, terminate, fire twice, bikers, and so on. And then Shock Assault. This is the new new uh, ability that they that they gave gave them. So they've now got four of these big abilities. This Shock Assault is quite scary. Um, if this unit makes a charge move, it is charged or performs a heroic intervention, add one to the attacks characteristics uh, of models in this unit until the end of the turn. So if they make a charge move or if they're charged or the heroic intervention, they get an extra attack. That's insane because it now means that these Primaris um, Space Marines, I think, if I'm right, will now have three attacks each. That's horrific. Anyway, combat doctrines, you've also got these combat doctrines. So you've got Devastator, Tactical, and Assault. So Devastator, um, the arm penetration of heavy and grenade weapons is improved by one. Tactical, uh, rapid fire and assault weapons uh, is improved by one. And then Assault, pistol and melee weapons is improved by one. So you activate these, these combat doctrines. Then you go on to the data sheets, and it's just a, a, a rush of all these data sheets. Um, you do eventually get a couple of pictures, not as many as in the previous codexes at all. You get a little bit of artwork, but this is not what I prefer. I much prefer codexes where, like that where you have a picture of the, the model or the unit, and then you have the data sheet below, and it gives you a chance to look at the, the unit and the model while you're reading the rules about it, and um, sort of make your own uh, opinions of it. I like that. I like the 50-50 or whatever. I'd rather have them up there and the Reaver Squad a bit, a bit lower, um, because it's kind of so disjointed. It's, it's um, opposite. It's not so, kind of... It's not symmetrical in a way. Um, and they've done that here. It's sort of like they've, here they, they put the rules and then the picture, and then they've, oh, picture, rules, oh, rules, picture. It's that kind of thing. Um, we won't go through all of these uh, data sheets. I'll do that in the review, but I'll just flick through what you get in this codex in terms of content. So it hits off with the, uh, pro so as you can see straight away, no special characters at all, none. Um, let's see right at the back. No. If you've got Gilliman that you bought a couple of years ago, if you've got Marnius Kalgar that you bought in December, guess what? You're going to have to buy this £25 codex and a £17.50 uh, supplement. That's going to cost you £42.50 uh, to use your Marnius Kalgar or um, uh, Rebute Gilliman. Um, no characters whatsoever. The characters will be in their respective supplements um overall i think that's a bad thing uh, there are positives and negatives um for having supplements uh but i thought the whole idea of, of this game and an eighth edition was to try and have things in like one book um rather than have to carry loads of books around you i know they're trying they always do try and push this digital editions of, of codexes and things which is hard to buy anyway, um, just because they're the same price as these physical books. Um, and in my opinion, they, they should be uh, a whole lot cheaper. Um, but still, do you really want to be, you know, taking these uh, books around and, uh, you know, to, to game with? If it was me, um, I would probably be uh, taking pictures of these on my iPad or something um, and then taking the iPad around to friends and then, you know, but that is a bit more cumbersome to sort of use rather than like flicking to a certain page and also the rules and, and things like that. You have to sort of look at things one by one, but still, um, that would be my own, own work around. Anyway, no special characters is the uh, footnote. It starts off with the Primaris Captain, then a Captain in Gravis Armour, Captain in Phobos armor, Captain in Terminator armor, Captain in Cataphracti armor, a Captain, Captain on bike, and that's it. So you've got no less than seven Captains in the Space Marine Codex. Lieutenants, always worth um, 
taking them for the tactical precision ability. You've got Primaris Lieutenant, you've got Librarian, Lieutenant in Phobos Armor. So I don't quite know why it's, you know, the, the Lieutenant in Phobos Armor should have been there and then it should have started with Librarian. That's a bit strange that they've sort of skipped one. Uh, then you've got Primaris Librarian. So again, it goes Lieutenant, Librarian, Lieutenant, Librarian. <laughs> it's really, really weird. Um, chaplain. Oh, there is a Chaplain, but it's later on. So this is really confusing. The, the layout is poor. Primaris Chaplain, Tech Marine, Librarian in Terminator Armor, Normal Chaplain, Librarian in Phobos Armor, which should have been there. Wow, Chaplain in Terminator Armor, that should have been, wow. And then Intercessor Squad. So, where's the, so there's the Primaris Chaplain. So where's the Primaris Tech Marine? Straight away, that has uh, instantly removed my want to get the Iron Hands um, Primaris Tech Marine. Wow. Basically saved myself £22 or so now because I was going to get one if it had Primaris Tech Marine in this. No, it doesn't. Um, and I think that that model will be coming out in, in a few weeks or so. It's got to be. Um, all with the Iron Hands supplement. Um, no doubt that model will be in the Codex. Why don't normal Space Marines have Primaris Tech Marines if the Ultima founding was, you know, thousands and thousands of Primaris and we've got Primaris Chaplains and Librarians and things like that. That's really, that's a strange omission right there. But that's what this channel's about. I try and look at in-depth as much as possible with these things. Anyway, moving forward then. Uh, so after all of those HQs in really strange orders, um, you then got troops. So it kicks off with the Intercessor Squad. Notice the power points cost of a five uh, for five of them. Um, with those Angels of Death um, rules, that really does bump them up now. Um, yes, they've got the two wounds and the two attacks, uh, but their weapons, you know, that Assault 3 suddenly becomes Assault 6. Um, crazy. Anyway, tactical squads. I think they're a bit cheaper points-wise, the points are in the back, um, but I'll go through the, the re them in the review. Um, then you've got Infiltrator Squads, and then a new troop choice, the Incursor Squads. Did we really need them? Do we need them? Are they meant to be another form of scouts? I need to read up on them. Um, they look like they've got exactly the same stat line as the Infiltrators right there. Uh, they've got this Oculus Bolt Carbine, which are basically like a bolt gun, um, but you can remove cover. You've got paired combat blades, you've got uh, haywire mines. It's kind of like a replacement for normal Space Marines. That's what I read anyway. You've got the multi-spectrum array, concealed positions and so on. Interesting. Have to read up a bit more about them. Then you've got the Scout Squad, a Primaris Apothecary. So we're on to Elites now. So you've got the Primaris Apothecary and a Normal Apothecary. Uh, then you've got Primaris Ancient, a Company Ancient, a Company Champion and Company Veterans, all in Elites. Servitors, Ancient in Terminator Armour. That's interesting. Wonder if we'll get a new, um, I mean, Ancient and Terminator has a Storm Bolt and Power Fist and um, also has an Astartes Banner. So it's like a Terminator, basically, with a banner. That'd be interesting. Terminator Squad. Terminator Assault Squad, you've got Cataphract Terminator Squad, you've still got the Tartarus Terminator Squad, Vanguard Veteran Squad, uh, Sternguard Veteran Squad, Dreadnoughts, Ironclad Dreadnoughts, 
Venerable Dreadnoughts, Contempt of Dreadnoughts, Redemptor Dreadnoughts, and the Invicta Tactical War Suits. So all of those are elites. Oh, and then you've got the Reaver Squad and the Aggressor Squad, <laughs> Centurion Assault Squad, and that's it. Um, so you've got a huge chunk of elites there, possibly too much. Too much, I think, in my opinion. You've got Apothecaries, Ancients, Veterans, Servitors, Terminators, loads of different Terminators, Vanguards, all the Dreadnoughts, loads of Dreadnoughts now. It's getting very bloated. You've got this Invicta Tactical Warsuit here. Um, how does it really compare to a normal Redemptor? Well, you get the same save, same leadership, same number of attacks, same number of wounds. Wow. Worse off in toughness, just by six, you know, six instead of seven. Uh, and obviously, weapon wise, it's got, you know, that twin Iron Hail auto cannon, which is all right. The damage of two is pretty nice. Um, and it's got the concealed position. Its movement is 10 inches, which is faster. It's actually faster than a Contempt of Dreadnought. Wow. That is interesting. Fastest Dreadnought going, 10 inches. And it's got that um, Invicta Fist, which bumps its strength by two. But its damage is three instead of D6. Is that better? I mean, the Redemptor Fist, you could just get a damage of one, whereas this is a guaranteed three. I'd probably say it's better, because you're guaranteed three, rather than possibly failing at one or two. You know. But there you go. They've made that fist pretty nice. Um, with the secure damage, and it also has this heavy sidearm. Yeah, where it gets a pistol three. Okay, moving on. Then you've got uh, fast attack then. So it kicks off with the bike squad. Will we get Primaris on bikes? Who knows? Um, this is the second codex uh, for Space Marines. Still no Primaris bikes. Um, the assault squad. Then you've got Inceptor squads. Suppressor squads. Which are the new ones. Still just the same... Weapon though, the Accelerator Auto Cannon, will we get them in a separate set? Who knows? Uh, Scout Bike Squad, Land Speeders, all different types of Land Speeders are here. So you've got, um, you know, you've got the Assault Cannon one, like the Tornado, you've got the Typhoon with the Missile Launcher, um, and so on. You've got Attack Bike Squads, Devastator Squads. And then Centurion Devastator Squads, one of my favourites. And then you've got these Eliminator Squads. Um, so these ones have this uh, Bolt Sniper Rifle that has uh, three different um, weapon profiles. They've also got this Instigator uh, Bolt Carbines, and then the last Fusils, which are this 36 inch range, Heavy 1, Strength 8, AP minus 3, and a Damage 3 uh, weapon. And you get three of them, and that's it. You're always going to get three of them. That's not many at all. Uh, I was hoping maybe you could get five, um, but they've stuck with three and you only, can only get three. So that really limits their output um, big time. Uh, and I think that they're, you know, four power points isn't that much, but they should be able to get their, their uh, points back. Then you've got Hellblaster Squad here as well um, for a power points cost of a six. Still rocking those um, plasma incinerators. Thunderfire Cannon. Again, this would have been an ample opportunity to showcase a Primaris uh, Tech Marine. You've got the Hunter and Stalker, a Whirlwind, Predator, Vindicator, and Land Raider. Uh, three flavours of Land Raiders. So you've got the normal one, the vanilla, the Raspberry, the Crusader, and then you've got the uh, Strawberry, the uh, Redeemer. <laughs> I don't know, just making that up. Um, then, more heavy support. Uh, the last one is the Repulsor Executioner. Uh, so, you know, this thing can transport six Primaris, uh, but to be fair, I would have rather it just been a dedicated tank and not carry anything. If that meant it got a better 
you know, secondary weapon or whatever, that would be awesome. Yes, the heavy laser destroyer is quite tasty, um, but damage output wise, you know, four las cannons is better. Um, and the fact that you can carry, uh, you know, 10 space marines in there or terminators or even centurions, if you wish. Um, there's a lot of comments and opinions and things on the internet about the Repulsor Executioner, um, but at the end of the day, it's a plastic tank that costs 60 pounds. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't get one. I think they should have priced it at exactly the same price as the Repulsor. I think what they've done pricing it at 60 is a bit cheeky. Then you've got some transport options, the Rhino, the Razorback, uh, drop pods, land speed of storm, and then the Repulsor as uh, transport option, obviously. And then you've got the new, uh, transport the impulsor we'll talk about that in a moment um but the interesting sentence here that says this model and any units embarked uh, aboard it are exempt from the tactical reserves match play rule that is an incredible rule it's a bit breaking it means that drop pods can um zoom in on turn one it means you can put all your army in them uh, it breaks so many things that other armies just can't use and yet it's pretty cool you know that you know space marines have more of a drop pod focus um, I don't know whether they're trying to sell more drop pods I don't know but there we go um, still no love for uh, drop podding in dreadnoughts I mean how on earth do dreadnoughts actually get on the battlefield um, unless they're already there or a thunderhawk or whatever drops them down um, again this book would have been a great uh, vehicle to sell um, you know dreadnought drop pods possibly um, dropping in dreadnoughts would have been brilliant and I would have rather than focus on dreadnought drop pods and the current red dreadnoughts rather than making these silly mech walker things anyway so you've got the repulsor oh sorry you've got the land speed of storm which can put your scouts in um, can only put five of them in though uh, you've got the repulsor which can transport 10 Primaris infantry. You can't put any jump pack models. You can't put any normal space Marines in. Maybe they're scared of going in a grav tank, uh, even though they've been in land speeders and things for ages. Uh, then you've got the, the Impulsor, um, which has got lots and lots of options here. It can transport six. So it's a dedicated uh, transport, uh, transport for the Primaris infantry, like Games Workshop have been pushing on the community website. They're pushing that, oh, it's an Impulsor, it transports um, Primaris infantry models, it's the transport uh, that you've been waiting for, it's a dedicated transport. But how is it a dedicated transport when the Repulsor transports 10? Please, please tell me how, when the Repulsor transports more than the dedicated transport? I, I'm, I don't know, it's just, it baffles me, their decisions, but, Either way, you've got lots and lots of options here. You've got the, um, it can have, it's a, it's equipped with two Storm Bolters. Um, you can have an Iron Hail Heavy Stubber. Uh, you can have the Shield Dome or Orbital Comms Array. The Shield Dome uh, gives it a four plus invulnerable, which is quite tasty. And the Orbital Comms Array, um, basically you can just have an Orbital bo um, Barrage. I think they're putting this, this, kind of golden rule in with with models to to sell them more in my opinion um it's like all right you you want an extra kind of um shooting attack uh, that will devastate your opponent but it's not really represented on the model other than the, this um comms array thing well yeah there we go that'll sell the model um its movement is 14 inches which is faster than the repulsor i must say it is definitely a very fast um vehicle I don't know how it gets around that fast, but there we go. Um, then you've got the, the flyers. So you've got the Stormhawk Interceptor, uh, the Storm Raven Gunship, Storm Talon Gunship, and that's it. And they're all of your data sheets. So a fair amount of data sheets, but I just feel it's quite sterile. I don't think it's got character. Well, literally it hasn't got any characters. I think it's very kind of, vanilla it's supposed to be vanilla it's codex space marines it's, it doesn't have any characters but i think the codex is worse for that to be to be honest and um, i think it's lost a lot by not having those characters i think it's also going to put a lot of people off and buying the characters as well you know before you could just buy one codex and it'd have 
everything about Space Marines in it. And then you could go, oh, well, I like this character, I like the backstory and things. I might just buy that character and start up a new Space Marine army. This is like, well, what is this? This is just like a Space Marine Codex for, you know, successor chapters. And the thing is, the clever thing about this is you need this um, for the supplements. You can't just buy the supplement and then it has these data sheets in it. You need to have them both. Um, anyway, Armory of the Space Marines, it goes through all of their weapons and then uh, you've got the kind of weapon profiles, loads of pages of that, them. Uh, this is five pages of weapon profiles, picture of all the new um, toys again, legacy of the Primarchs, got chapter tactics for them. Um, I mean, some of these are going to be pointless, I suppose, because they're going to have their um, supplements out, which will just repeat these anyway. Successor chapter tactics, warlord traits, warlord traits there for the different chapters, and then you've got stratagems. And then chapter relics. There's some nice primaris ones in there now, though. Librarius discipline, obscuration discipline, and little needs of battle for your chaplains. And then you've got your points values there. Doesn't have all of them on one page, which is quite uh, unsatisfying. It puts flyers and, and heavy support on the on the next page with the repulsor executioner topping in at 215 points. A land raider is 180, by the way. Then you've got uh, ranged weapons, uh, melee weapons and some war gear and then some tactical objectives. And that's it, and that's your 192 pages um, of your brand new Space Marine Codex. It's the second edition within the eighth edition of the, of the rules and things, if you want to call it that way. Uh, it definitely puts them top tier in terms of rules and all their abilities, but it's getting bloated again now, uh, eighth edition. It's getting, you know, it's still more streamlined than seventh, but you're now getting lots and lots of abilities for these factions and armies. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of layering going on and um, it's very, very Primaris focused, heavily Primaris focused. Um, they've moved the storyline on a little bit, of course, you know, a couple of hundred years or so, um, but you can just feel the kind of watering down and, and insignificance of normal space marines in this in this codex. I'd never thought it would come to this, but you just can. There's a big, big push. And like I said in my my Instagram post, you know, the future of Warhammer 40,000 um, is, is this. It's this. Is that original? I mean, is anything original? Well, yeah, there are original things about, but Maybe I'm just looking at it because we've had so many Walker type things over the past, you know, five, ten years or so. Um, but to me, it doesn't really work. And I hope this isn't the future. I hope it does go more grim dark. These are the Emperor's finest, but they are killing machines at the end of the day, not kind of pistol whipping mechs. Interesting times ahead for Space Marines. I'm glad that they've still got the Horus Heresy at Forge World, and I'm glad they're still making awesome looking models, um, you know, for Space Marines there. Anyway, that is my first look. It seemed more like a review, but I will go through the review um, once all the models and things are out. I may be getting a few packs of the new models. I'm not getting the Invicta War suit by any chance. If anyone wants to post me one, feel free and I'll unbox it. But other than that, I might get the other, the other models um, that are coming out. What do you guys think of the Codex? What do you guys think of, I'll open up the discussion even further, of the direction that Games Workshop are going in with, with Space Marines? Uh, please feel free as always, start a discussion, put it down in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching The Emperor Protects.